it's Annabelle. I am gonna share with you my favorites. I'm really glad to be here. I almost didn't think I could film. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw that last week, my seasonal allergies hit really bad. So there was an entire day where I actually couldn't not have an ice pack on my face because my eyes, my whole sinus gets incredibly swollen and it almost feels like a mild fever. The only thing I don't suffer from is coughing, but California is no joke though. It was mainly when I went to RISD that I got most of my subscribers. You never saw me suffer through this, not really, because I never really got allergies on the East Coast. It could be because it's humid. Bambi, you wanna come in? My bangs don't look like they normally do because I've been clipping them back for the whole week because having an ice pack, it gets really gross. So today I actually styled my hair. This is the best I have looked and felt in a while and I will trim these bangs because they get into my eyes. I just wanted to do a really fast video because I get asked a lot how to trim them. Prairie is with Lilith right now. I realize that not everybody watches my videos without jumping around. So just to fill in the blanks, my university closed in March and we only had two days until I had to fly out. So Bambi has flown before twice and he's very good with travel. You saw in the vlog, he's an angel and Prairie has no interest in going outside of the house. She doesn't like being locked or even when I took her on the stroller rides, I feel like she was just being nice to me, but she didn't really love it. Whereas Bambi is much more curious. I guess you would say like dog-like, but I mean, cats, cats, there are outdoor cats, okay? I don't like when everyone always compares it to dogs. Eventually Prairie will come to California because at this point, I think I'm just gonna come back here after graduation, whenever. Originally, I wanted to stay in the East Coast just for a couple years and try out being an artist, living somewhere different. He went looking for his bed over there. He jumped up he was like, where, 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 where'd he go? But this is it. I put it over here because I wanted you in the background. So yeah, it looks like I will tentatively live with my family. It definitely is going to affect my projects and just how I want to function and expanding my store and everything. But there's a lot of external factors that's going to impede on like what I want to do in terms of growing my site or opening my store and things like that anyway. So it looks like that for a while I'll just be on like a gap year, gap semester. In the meantime, I really enjoy being with my family because I'm pretty close to my parents and it's really nice being reunited with my cats, the ones that I grew up with because I have Prairie and Bambi now. Um, as I was saying with Prairie though, our plan was to hopefully keep her with Lilith until we can move into an apartment or something like that. And that way she wouldn't have to meet any other cats. Prairie hates other cats. Like she loves people so nice to strangers and very, very affectionate and friendly. And she gets really on edge with other cats. And with Bambi, I think the first time they met, it took her a week to just be able to relax. And it was a couple months until she actually liked him. Then for December, they went to a friend for babysitting and then she ended up hating him all over again for a whole month. And then when he had the cone, cause his ears had problems, she hated him again because he, he looked really scary with the cone. So she was so afraid of him. And I just didn't want to put that stress on her because she would be standing on the shelf for a whole night and not sleep well. And I just know that it really affects their lifespan. So in my mind, I cared about that a lot. I don't think we can move into apartment or like find a place right now. Like with the finances that we were looking at, it's just better to stay here. And I have to say the other reason why they ended up getting along is because Bambi is really sweet, okay? Despite how crazy he can be as a kitten and hyper, he's actually just, so docile and kind spirited he never would hiss back over time it convinced prairie that he's not a threat when i trim bambi's nails or anything no matter how miserable he is he would never take it out on me but prairie when i the first time i clipped her claws she tried to scratch me at the end just out of spite okay but like i, I dodged it but she is well then again she was a lot older when she was found 
at the pound, but Bambi, he was just a kitten and he was born straight into the foster home. So I guess he was never subjected to danger. Wow, I went on. That was an intro, but you know what? I'm starting to treat these videos like podcast style where there's just a lot of banter and a lot of random tangents, but I wanted to go into my first favorite right now because my lips are dying. I, I'm just really chapped and dry as a human. That's why I wash my hair once a week. Dry skin everywhere. One of my favorites is the Glossier Balm.com. This is the mango flavor and they call it the universal skin salve because you can put it on your cuticles, they say your elbows. Um, some people put it on their eyelids for that wet, glossy look. I've, I've never done that because I'm afraid that it would make me break out or something. But I do put it over here when I was ripping up my skin from blowing my nose last week. It definitely helps. And it also doesn't make it burn. Whereas when you put lotion on, whatever they put in the lotion, it stings. Fire. I normally just do this. I don't really like putting it on my finger. Now that it's been getting hot this week, the consistency of this changed, so I make sure I'm gonna put it in the bathroom because this room is right facing the sunset and it kind of melted. The consistency got messed up. So I'm trying to massage it as much as possible to get that buttery consistency back. I love the smell of fruits. Even though I don't eat fruits, I appreciate the scent and the appearance. I wouldn't say it's April's favorite in particular because I use it all year, but it just happened to come to mind this month because I've been pairing it with lip gloss. I've been playing around with this lip gloss a lot and it's because when you don't go outside, you don't have to worry about the wind blowing your hair onto your lip gloss. Since I'm just indoors all the time, I keep these two by my computer and when I'm bored, I just touch up my lip gloss a little bit. So I didn't want to apply this until I began filming so there could be a little bit of a demo for what it's worth. These work really well with each other. I don't think this in any way moisturizes your lips. It's so thick and gooey. Um, it just slides right on. It's really, really slimy, but almost very satisfying in a way. So I use the balm as like a primer. Keeps my lips comfortable for hours on end. I would say that this is like, it's glassy. I think it used to be called lip glass. Maybe there was just a little bit of confusion. So they changed it because now they just call it lip gloss on the site. So these are just like reliable classics. And the lip gloss in particular, what's important for me is that it has no flavor. I cannot stand any lip product with artificial meh. And this one's unscented as well. It's translucent. I love the pink tint. It looks like nothing though. They have other colors now. I think there's three. I also have the one that's red that I put on occasionally. And with that color, it gives you a slightly pink tint. So some days where my lips are so pale, if I'm really cold or something, my lips just like blend into the rest of my face. That gives you more of a natural, healthy pink hue. And then this is just beautiful in itself. I like to keep this on my desk always, both of these. This was really, really essential. And I remember when there was just the original bomb.com with no scent or anything, but now there's a whole range, but mango and rose are my favorite too. Every time I apply it, either the fruitiness or the sweetness of the rose just gives me a little bit of happiness and also the nice color blocking. I like products that contribute something to the space. So I like to have it here on my desk rather than like nice functional products, but they should stay in the drawer because they don't look really cute. I feel like this is overall going to be a very underwhelming favorites video because I don't have a whole lot. I never had a Spotify subscription before because I either mooched off of Tyler's or somebody else's and Tyler ended his because he got Apple Music and then I ended up listening to Pandora or Spotify with ads because I just, I was trying to be as frugal as possible and thinking if I want to spend money on things like go out to the movies, then I should spare monthly expenses. It was when I got really into the swing of working on my thesis at school and I was sketching for like five hours in a row at home. The ads got really old. It would be the same ads over and over again. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to start an investment. I'm going to listen to Spotify all the time because I will just have my Bluetooth earphones in working at the silkscreen table and it's going to be productive and it's going to be a great 
investment because if I pay for this, then I want to actually use it. So I try to play it as much as possible. And when I'm not playing it now, I play it to my mom in her room because she loves jazz and samba. Short story long, I got Spotify. So now I'm making my playlists again and it's Piper Blue if you want to follow because don't even though because I'm not really ready and I'm still finding artists all the time. I really enjoyed Moral of the Story by Ash. Big Thief would always come on when I listened to Pandora and their album Masterpiece is great, but even the song Masterpiece, I love it. I think my favorite song on that album is Mary, followed by Paul or Masterpiece. I don't really know how to share music favorites because we used to be able to play a tiny bit, you know, in the background, but now YouTube is getting really strict with copyright. It's wild. I got a bunch of strikes from videos from like three to four years ago. It was just playing off my computer in a vlog and it was an eight second clip and that would even get a copyright strike. So I had to mute that part of the video and then add like a random song in with YouTube's editor. Some mistakes get made, that's all right, that's okay. You can think that you're in love when you're really just in pain. Some mistakes get made, that's all right, that's okay. In the end, it's better for me. That's the moral of the story, babe. Ooh, ooh. And I think in the real song, she goes up an octave, but I think I went through a second puberty because I can't sing high notes anymore. Like. You saw the masterpiece She looks a lot like you Wrapping your left arm around your right Ready to walk you through the night One thing I love about Big Thief is their instruments is that how you talk about music? I guess the alternative rock, I really, really enjoy it. Whereas there's some indie music where I only love the melody and I don't really care for or even think about the track. Another artist I forgot to mention is Phoebe Bridgers. I discovered her this month and I was listening to all her albums. The Killer and the Sound is a collaboration with Noah and Abby Gunderson. It's a duet, so Noah's voice is really beautiful when they intertwine. The piano is so hauntingly beautiful. I love that song. I just have it on repeat all the time. It's one of those songs where it's, it's sad, but then it doesn't dampen the mood. It doesn't make me feel really down. I'm really hungry, I just realized. You know why? Because I'm looking at this when I'm talking. This is a favorite of mine, <laughs> Biscoff. When I was trudging through the aisles before everything happened, I was shopping and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna treat myself to this. I've always been cautious to buy cookie butter because it's like once you open that door, I was afraid to get addicted and fall in. I love to mix it with peanut butter. I recommend that. They have a branch in San Francisco. They have a whole store, but most of the time in America, we would get these at grocery stores and stuff. If you've had the Biscoff biscuits, it tastes exactly like this. They literally just ground it up really fine until it's smooth and buttery. Putting this on toast without anything else, it just tastes like you're eating the biscuit. Also, baking with this, I imagine, would be really cool. If there was a recipe for peanut butter frosting, you can just replace it with this butter. It would just be Biscoff cupcake or something. When I was making the sticky mix to clamp everything together. When, when you make the sticky syrupy thing to hold together the nuts and the granola, adding some of this gave it a nice note in the back. Next, I'm gonna mention a couple of film favorites. 1917, I never ended up making a favorites video, so I couldn't mention it, but I saw 1917 back in January. Best movie I've seen in the theater this year so far, or actually like the best movie I've seen other than Parasite in the last year. When I watched it, it was like 10 in the morning. I like to go to the early birds and I was not, I was just, I couldn't get out of that space for the rest of the day. <laughs> Just thinking about it now, just wow. The way that the ending was too, I just 
kept thinking about it, but I don't think this is spoiling it, but basically I didn't know going into this that it was shot continuously. So the two hour movie wasn't shot in one shot, but there would be segments, like seven to eight minute segments where the camera is rolling. And I began to notice this maybe like five minutes in. I was just really stunned that the camera seemed to be panning left to right every time somebody is talking, but it would never cut. Having the continuous shot throughout the entire movie really pronounces the fact that it was about a day's journey. It's like this long, dangerous, laborious journey to get from one place to another place during an era where there was no way to call each other up. The only way you can let somebody know during a wartime is to send someone. When I first saw the trailer, I was kind of just like, oh, okay, it's another war movie. And my friend Kat loves war movies, so we went to see it together. What I appreciate about it is just, it's really atypical for a war movie. Not about as much about battles or like, you know, the war and the politics politics of that historic event. It's actually about these people sent as messengers, a tiny blip in this whole picture that we've already learned so much about. So it almost feels like it wasn't a war movie, but it's just a movie about humanity. It made me just cry. Like I, I would go home and just like think about it and cry. It just felt so real and I felt so connected to the people on screen and the performance. Even though there's definitely a lot that's fabricated, with the artistic liberties of making the film, I still felt so present. I wouldn't say it's something I could watch again really easily, I have to be in the mood for it. Same thing with Parasite, but they're both so good. Um, another film favorite is actually a K-drama. So, you know, I started watching K-dramas on Netflix. So I began with Crash Landing on You. It was all because during an Instagram Live, I got a lot of suggestions. Then I moved on to When the Camellia Blooms. I enjoyed all of these, but my favorite that I'm mentioning right now is Reply 1988. I just, I loved how wholesome and funny it was. Not what I expected. I also realized that there's 1997 and Reply 1994. I'm only gonna talk about 1988 because I haven't watched the other ones yet. Don't worry, I will, okay? There's a lot of people telling me to watch 1997. I definitely will. But Reply 1988 is set in South Korea and it's on one block where I believe four families or maybe five families. It's just about their day to day. And it gives me the same feeling as like friends, just where you know these family members and you feel like you're a part of that gang. And it's just about these funny moments of them spending time together, celebrating birthdays or overcoming losses, um, the stresses of high school, what it is to be a parent. Most of the American TV shows I'm used to watching, the parents are like in the background, they're like supporting roles. Here, they're just as important to the storyline. And if you watched my studio makeover and there was a sound with a sheep, some people were like, what the heck? That is because in Reply 1988, every time there would be like a funny moment or an awkward moment, they would use that sheep sound instead of like a laughing reel, which I found really weird, but also like over time, you think that's so normal. When you watch a show, you just accept it. So if there would be like a funny, awkward moment, there would just be like, meh. Oh, battery's dying. Back on the air. I have talked for so long. And here I was afraid that I wouldn't have enough to share in this favorites, but instead I'm going for quality over quantity. Only two left to talk about. My category is books. And I'm gonna start with this graphic novel called Ripples by YY Pang. It is a detective's diary. And she is an illustrator based in the UK. This was published in 2017 by Piao Studio. I discovered this in August. I remember because I first cut my hair and dyed it black and we went to San Francisco. It was like a girl's trip, me, Lilith, mom, grandma, and I finally got to read it. And it looks like a long read, so I kept saving it until I had an appropriate time. It actually took maybe half an hour to 40 minutes. I am a slow reader, it takes me a long time, and I was trying to digest and really admire all of the scenes. I'm not familiar with comics and I never read manga, so I didn't know that. But if you are, you probably think this is a really short book. I can't spoil it, so I'm gonna read the back. It says, the big city police department sends two detectives to investigate a missing persons report in Big Lake. The mystery seems to be more mysterious than a regular mystery. Dogs in town are crying. Lucky for us, we were able to get a hold of one of the detective's notebooks. And better yet, it was fully illustrated with super nice drawings. 
So the way that I perceive this book is really different than how it ended up being. This is what the book looks like really fast. It's all graphite and it has the hand drawn quality because it literally is. Even the text is not a font. And you can also see where the artist erased certain things and started over. I like that this book offers a lot of insight on how to illustrate and how to render different textures with graphite so I can learn from it and look back at it a lot because I want to grow my illustration skills. Not only is it cute, it is very quiet. My sister read it as well and she mentioned that a lot of graphic novels don't give as much space for silence. You know, they're standing by the water where you're just watching this fish and just taking it in. And it's not like, I'm just gonna ooh, go through all the pages because I'm really going with the timeline that's showing. This one I love because this character is putting on this jacket, but it's shown from outside the window of the office, which just builds the scene. Then there's a bird's eye, and then the sequence of the elevator door opening and the scale used. And when I bought this, I didn't even read who it was by. So I realized later after the fact that it's by a Chinese illustrator or a Chinese British illustrator, Ch Chinese. When my sister first wanted to study art, my mom or my parents, my entire family actually was just really unsure. We had a lot of qualms about pursuing art as a career because no one in our family or anyone that we knew really went to college for art. We didn't know how to validate pursuing art as a career, you know? And then there's a whole Chinese stereotypes of like how much money you gotta earn. Now, just whenever I see women of color making beautiful things and I'm um, supporting their business, it feels encouraging to me because I guess I feared a little bit about pursuing art as a career. And um, I, I feel differently now though, because I'm finishing up art school and back then in high school it wasn't as common of a thing where it's like you know all the chinese families are saying you shouldn't pursue something that you're not going to earn a lot in you should go after um computer science but now i think there's more and more especially in my generation and younger there's gonna hopefully be a lot more recognition in media the very last book i'm gonna talk about is self mapping by brian main and i haven't finished it yet my goal was to finish this so i can talk about it but you can see my little doggy bookmark i am two-thirds through i wanted to include it because i think it has genuinely already improved my life it gives me a lot of key ideas. There are a lot of prompts for you to be reflective and it's meant just for self-development. I came across this at the Brown Bookstore when I was there to buy a textbook and then I went upstairs and then there was this whole aisle of psychology and stuff and then the graphics, obviously, the cover. I was like, oh, this is so interesting. And I didn't think too much about it. I just looked behind and saw all the accolades. So I thought, I'm gonna try this for myself. I'm gonna get this. I wanna make this chart, but it turns out the chart's not as cool as it looks. It's a very simple idea and it's really not necessary, honestly, the chart itself, okay. But the topics that relate to the chart, that's what I think are really worth mentioning. It can feel a little cheesy sometimes because there's the concept of your higher self and lower self, and that's just to establish um, a body of vocabulary so that they can refer to it quickly throughout the book. But it reminds me of Friends when Rachel and Phoebe and everyone, they're reading the book and they're like, my wind, like, let me blow, you know, that kind of thing. The higher self, they relate to the right brain and the left brain as lower self. Just like yin and yang, you need both to function. High self moves towards comfort and the lower self is driven by fear. Ego is rooted in the lower self, but if you base too much of your actions and just your personality on your ego, it is a very toxic way of living or thinking because you're not being proactive and you're really just acting through fear of something. I took so many notes on it, so I can go into it maybe when I talk about journaling or mental health. So it's a great catalyst to begin self-improvement and healing. A lot of the chapters help me think about my insecurities and why. I plan to talk about it more in a different video, maybe about my journaling, maybe about mental health or just thinking about that. But one thing I will say is I always thought I was an introspective person. I thought I was very aware, but some of the prompts here makes me realize I'm not aware as I thought for some things or 
sometimes it's harder than you think it is to be aware and the real issues that are hidden that you need to recognize and some wounds that need to be opened it's difficult but it needs to happen in order for real healing to begin so that you're not carrying those burdens with you but instead you're accepting it and you're making it part of why you're the strong person that you are from when i began to read it and do all the exercises i think it made me more confident in myself there's a lot of stigma around being insecure and everyone's like no i'm not insecure i'm just it's like if we put less shame and stigma on that then everyone could learn to be more vulnerable and we can connect with one another rather than just pretending like we're all fine and being really anxious on the inside i didn't realize how long it's been since i actually feel like i like myself or being around myself and that is so tedious i used to get all of my confidence from validation from other people whether it be my friends classmates YouTube viewers, but that's really dangerous and it has to really come from you first It's a solo journey almost in a way because talking to people about my insecurities Like they want to build me up and they'll give me compliments, but that only feeds to my dependency on external validation to feel like I like and accept myself and once I feel more accepting of myself, I realized that in turn made me less judgmental of others. It's the people that are most critical at other people that have all these criticisms of themselves deep down. Everything about this book is brilliant, but um, it was a good, it was a good $16 that I invested in. And I'm gonna wrap up this very, very long April favorites. I hope that you enjoy this. Thank you so much for tuning in. I. had a lot of fun chatting and you're always in my thoughts whenever i'm discovering anything new i can't wait to share and i hope that i'll make more of these chit chats in the future thank you so much for tuning in for your time and support if you enjoyed this video please thumbs up the algorithm has been difficult a lot of people say that they don't even see my things on their subscription or they're unsubscribed so if you enjoy this please let me know in the comments bye this one is distributed from the little that's okay it's the end it's I'm reading lyrics and I got it wrong anyway. Their songwriting skills are just great. I enjoy the guitar a lot. I'll, just, I'll stop now. Le coeur, le coeur. It just looks not symmetrical. Whatever. For those who don't watch everything in Cruella, I'm a little bit germophobic. Just actually like. Sending you our love. Stay safe and take care.